Regardless what we experienced, what we saw, we still could not believe in it. It was too horrible to comprehend. They are not going to kill all of us. It's ridiculous. Who will do a thing like that? First, I was working in a field with the Polish farmers. Uh, we believed that by working, they will let us stay. But by middle of, middle of 1942, there was no way for us to exist outside the ghetto. We just ran out of money and places to hide. Now, a ghetto was created in every large town. It was just a few blocks in the slum area, surrounded by walls or barbed wires, like a prison. We had to be smuggled in, because being found outside, we would have been shot on the spot. My parents decided that I should go on my own, pretending to be a Polish Christian girl and to go to work in Germany. I just turned 16 and I said to my mother, no, I won't be going anywhere. Whatever will happen to you all will happen to me. And my mother started to cry. And she said to me, look, you are the one in danger. And if they will take you away, I won't live through it. I didn't want to be a burden to them. And when we parted, I didn't even say a proper goodbye. And that was the last time that I saw them. I finished up working in Germany, in Hamburg, in a factory with 47 girls. I was scared every minute of the day and night of being recognized. If somebody just glanced at me, my insight used to turn over. The first couple of months, I got some letters from my father that were smuggled out from the ghetto and sent to me. Then it stopped. And I didn't know what to do, how to get any news. In desperation, at Easter in 1943, I sent out three postcards to Polish friends. One of the so-called friends went to the Gestapo, that the secret police, and betrayed me. But in the meantime, Hamburg was bombed, was completely destroyed. I left Hamburg and I found work on a farm 50 kilometers away. And while Hamburg was burning, we were in the middle of fighting. The police or Gestapo, they still had time and patience to look for me because I committed such a tremendous crime of being born Jewish. I was taken into Gestapo headquarters. I was interrogated all day long. By the end of the day, I was allowed to go back to work. Now, I knew that I couldn't stay there any longer. So, I ran away. Next day, I was apprehended, again taken into Gestapo headquarters. I was standing all day long from morning to night next to the Gestapo men, facing the wall with my hands in handcuffs. I couldn't take it anymore and I wanted to end it. So I turned around to the Gestapo men and I said, I will tell you the truth. I am Jewish and you can shoot me and I really wanted him to kill me. I spent a month in a jail. They took us in a prison cars to the station 
and I was told that I am going back to my hometown, Majdanek. Majdanek was second largest extermination camp, and it was built on the outskirts of the town where I was born. And we were marching. I was in the last row, and then I heard, halt, stop. I stopped, and in that split of a second, I realized the, the one behind me with the gun was one step in front of me. So I was thinking, if I am out, why should I go in? They won't shoot me in front of all those people, and even if they did, I didn't care. And I closed my eyes and very slowly started walking. I knew I couldn't run. And my, the worst was my heart. It was beating in my head. And it was so loud that I was scared that everyone can hear it. And I saw a train just opposite the prisoners. So I ran to that train and I went in and through the window, I could see the prisoner standing. <laughs> and I was praying to God, please let the train move. Then I saw the commotion there, police running along the other train. Probably they called out my name and I wasn't there. And at that moment, the train started moving. People say, you must have been very clever and very brave, but that's not the truth. I wasn't brave, far from it. I was petrified. I finished up not far from Dresden, where I managed to convince the people that I am who I told them I was. I fabricated a new name, new story behind it. And I worked there till I was liberated in early spring of 1945 by the Russian army. All the family that I left behind in Poland, they all perished. I don't know even how or where. And it took me 42 years to be able to talk about my past. The first time that I tried to share my experiences was in 83 to a sculpture without having to talk. And only in 87, after I wrote my life story, that somehow I became free. It's my duty, you know, to give voice to those who lost it, because people should be aware what ignorance can bring. <laughs>